Catholics have been putting their faith into action for 75 years in the Diocese of Joliet, and we have a lot to celebrate. This podcast episode is one of a 14-part series being produced for our 75th anniversary. I'm Justin Reyes, one of the co-hosts for the season, and I lead the Department of Catechesis and Evangelization. And I'm Michelle Dellinger, the Director of Communications. Together, we'll interview a wide variety of clergy, religious, and parishioners across the diocese. We're so happy you're here with us. Enjoy the show. Hi, I'm joined today by Katie Golowatch, a parishioner at Church of the Holy Ghost in Wooddale. Katie's story is fascinating. It's about love and war and dedication, and I think she can give us all a new perspective about our faith and the religious freedom we likely take for granted. Thank you for being with us today, here today, Katie. We really appreciate you sharing your story. And I'd like to start by having you give us some details about your, your family, your childhood, your parents, where you were born, what it was like, what you remember. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I was born in uh, former Yugoslavia, a town called Yabuka. And um, I had one sister that was 10 years older than me. Um, my uh, mom died young. I was born just around the time of when the uh, Second World War started. Okay, so you were born in Yugoslavia during this very volatile time in its history and yes. following the German invasion and World War II officially ending in 40, 1945, the Yugoslav government actually fled to London in exile and mm-hmm. left your region with a communist-led transitional government. And many people were actually taken into custody for treason. Trials were broadcast to destroy civil opposition and In fact, the Catholic Church was singled out and targeted by the new authorities, and your archbishop was even tried and imprisoned. So as a Catholic family, this climate probably affected everyone really deeply, didn't it? It it was very hard. We were forbidden to go to church. Our priest just disappeared. I mean, they just took him, and we never found out what happened to him. And um, we were uh, told that if we go to church and if we practice uh, religion, we were going to be taken into orphanages or our parents could go to jail. And so pretty much uh, we didn't have any freedom, you know, any, we were, um, it was very oppressive, you know. Sure. Okay, so you're a child and you can no longer go to church, but you had a special person in your life who continued to teach you Catholicism, didn't you? Yes, uh, my grandfather. My mom passed away and then it was just my sister and me and grandpa was taking care of us because my dad had to be trying to make sure that we survive, you know, to work. And so grandpa taught me, okay. He, um, He was always telling me stories about when he was... Uh, young and uh, about his religion. He was very religious. He uh, was born in 1878 and he helped build the town church. So it was, the church was very special to him. So he was really involved. Yes, right. And so he's the one that that decided, you know, to tell me stories. And then he started teaching me um, to read the catechism and go through everything, you know, and, uh, he was very influential in my in my religion and uh, believing in God that God is always with you and God is going to save you. You know, too. Sounds like he was a great blessing to your family. Yes. And so, in addition to your grandpa, there was another man, a priest from another town, because yes. you had lost yours, um, mm-hmm. who also made efforts to help you and others learn your faith. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. Somehow. He- Through someone, he found out that we didn't have a priest, but we had a few Catholic families still left in town. And so once a month, he would ride his bicycle through, so he wouldn't be detected kind of through cornfields and wood and stuff. And he would come and say mass for us. And there was about 10 kids that were old enough, you know, to have the 
first confirm uh, the first like uh, confession confession and the communion and then the confirmation so what he did is he started he he has to sneak into town and so did we we went through the garden there was a garden around the church and we would go through the bushes and the stuff and come into the back in church, not in the front. So you were literally hiding, hiding as yes. you went into the building. Yes. So the building still existed, the, the church building. building. Yeah. Yes, it was still there, right? It isn't there anymore. Okay. Yeah. But um, I'll get to that. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so he he started, you know, he, he had us in a back room where nobody could see us, and he was the, talking to us about... Um, um, our first confession and everything. So we did this all. It didn't take years, in, in a couple of months, okay? Because he wanted to make sure that we we go through all this, you know. And then um, and the, uh, two, three weeks later, he came back and we did our, uh, our first communion. And then he started working on the confirmation, okay? Okay, so you did it in stages. Yes, right, right. And then um, when we were um, getting ready to have our uh, confirmation, it was a very exciting time for us kids. There was six of us, a uh, ten, six girls and four boys, okay? Okay. And these were kids that you had grown up with? Right, right, yes. And I went to school with and everything, okay? And so he um, somehow the authorities found out about it, okay? And they said if uh, if the the bishop and the priest come for the confirmation, they're gonna if they step a foot over a border, they're gonna kill him. Yeah, and so it, it was canceled. My my dad came home and he said that you know there isn't gonna be any confirmation. It's canceled, and it was very disappointing, you know, for us. Well, you must kids. have been so conflicted. Of course, you wanted to go through the ceremony, but you didn't want harm right. to come to these. To, he, 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 or else my my dad could have been taken prisoner, or they're going to put us in orphanages. They would threat, threaten us with all these things, okay? But uh, our parents didn't give up, okay? They were working with the, with the priest, whatever they, I don't know, whatever they met, in, you know, in, in secret. And so they decided that the priest and the bishop were going to come at night. They're going to cross the river with a rowboat, okay? And then they were going to come at night. So on the last day, my dad told me that uh, we're going to get confirm uh, confirmed, right? But I cannot tell it to anybody. It has to be just between us, you know, a secret, so he doesn't get go to jail, or I don't get taken to orphanages. And then at that particular point, my sponsor was not available, so we had to substitute my dad's aunt as my sponsor. You know, who lived with you locally? Right, right. Okay. And um, yeah, the 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 bishop and the and the priest uh, came with the rowboat. Somebody brought them over with the rowboat across the river, and then they stayed in the woods till it got really dark. And then they snuck in the back door, and we had our confirmation. And it was, it was such a, a lifting. It it was like. Uh, I almost you can't explain how happy we were that we were able to to do our confirmation, you know. We didn't have no party or anything afterwards. It was all secret, you know. And um, after the the con uh, the confirmation, I, I felt that the Lord was standing right behind me and watching me and protecting me, okay. And I um I I loved I loved the our, our statue of the Blessed Virgin holding baby Jesus. Every time I went to church, I never that that was the first place I always would go to. It was just my favorite thing, and I would like try talking to Mary. So you and, can still see this in your mind's eye. Yes, yeah, I still see her statue in the glass thing that was in. So after the confirmation, I uh, I went. By the statue, I kneeled down, I prayed, and I thanked her for helping us get our confirmation done. And then I realized that, you know, I'm not a little girl anymore. I'm growing up. 
and my faith is growing, and I have to really um, concentrate on the on the Lord, and 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 you know, and that have Him help me and be there for me all the time. And I have experienced that. Then we were told. My dad said, "You cannot tell anybody what happened." You know that we had our confirmation; it's a secret, and the kids were all told the same thing. So in school, we avoided each other because we didn't want to be happy and talk about it. Oh, so because, you had gone through this special experience with these other kids, but you couldn't really share that. Right, right, exactly. We had to be very careful who we talked to and what we said and everything. It was because you had to worry about your your family, yourself. You know, you didn't want to. Oh, sure. You wanted to protect everyone right. that you loved. Right, exactly. And okay. How old were you at this time? Uh, I was uh, 13. Okay. 13 years. So mm -hmm. you're just kind of becoming a teenager. And after some time, your family left your hometown yes. and you immigrated. Where the, did you go? The year, the year later, my, my dad got a job in another town. So we moved, okay, to the other town that didn't have a church. I don't know if they had destroyed it or what, but it, there was no church in that town, okay. So uh, then my dad decided that, you know, it's time to um, leave the country, okay. Because it was still very oppressive. Very, right, exactly. And you, you still had no rights, you know. They took away all your property, all your rights. You, you kind of like were, uh, didn't, your life really didn't You weren't matter. free. So right. where did you go next? Then we crossed the, the border, uh, and we, we in Austria, we got the train, and we went to Germany. Um, there was on the border of, um, by Salzburg, a refugee camp on the other side, the German side. And um, we, we, were, um, they, we got asylum from the Ger German uh, government to you were stay. were granted asylum? Yes, okay. right, to stay there. And uh, then they moved us to the further to another place, okay. And and eventually, my dad was able to get together with a, a Catholic relief service, okay. And he worked with them, and they um, because they had to find a sponsor for us, okay, to come to the United States. So that was your goal. You didn't want yes. to stay in Germany, no, right, or Austria, right? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So and you found so. Um, the Catholic Relief Service came back once they found they found somebody in Massachusetts, okay, anonymous person. They didn't want to. So you didn't know them, right? But they exactly. were willing to sponsor right. you. We were thankful to him, but we didn't know him, okay. Was it also someone from your region? We don't know. Okay. Yeah, we don't know anything about. It. Like I said, he wanted to stay anonymous, okay, but he sponsored our, uh, the the family, and then. We came to the United States in uh, in in fifty seven. Okay, nineteen fifty seven. And you originally went to another state, not Illinois. No, we went. The sponsor had he must have been a businessman because he had a lot of contacts in Chicago. Okay, so uh, the. Uh, Catholic Relief Service already had six jobs for my dad lined up in Chicago. Okay. That the sponsor had given him, and the sponsor had uh, paid for us to stay at a hotel in Chicago till we get situated for a week or so. Okay. And then we found a place to live, and my dad found one of the jobs for out of the six he got, you know. And uh, was that scary or exciting? That was exciting. That was exciting. The scary part was behind us. Yeah, you were leaving that. And and I always, I, all through all the things that I've gone through, I've always known that uh, God is behind me. That God is always watching over me, and and I had a very strong belief that the, the Lord is around me all the time. And then as I. As I got older, I was thinking, and I thought to myself, oh, my God, you know, the, the bishop and the priest were very, and our parents, they were very brave. 
that they um, they risk their lives, yeah, right, just for ten kids to have their their confirmation, you know, and uh, it 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 was a very exciting time, but a very scary time. Yeah. Okay, so how old were you when you settled in Wooddale and at Holy Ghost Church? Yeah, I I, I was already at that time. I was twenty three, and I I was already married. So my husband and me bought the house in Wooddale. Okay, and, and then we joined the Holy Ghost Church. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so that became where you you're still there today. Yes, so. right. Uh-huh. Actually, it was a little country white church. You know, a little country church that was white. It wasn't the church that you see now. And now we have a beautiful Surrounded big church. Surrounded by yes. yes. Okay. So, Katie, you know, I think your story is fascinating, and it offers us a different perspective, of course, on how blessed we are all to have religious freedom and to participate in on the sacraments mm-hmm. freely. So, you know, again, how do you think your childhood experiences have shaped your faith life now as an adult? I think it it made it stronger. I'm sure. It made it, I mean, I always believed that God was watching over me and he was helping me. But now I kind of like, I live it because I, every day I think I, I would not be able to carry on without God and without, you know, um, I joined the discipleship in Woodell, I go to um, um, scripture study, you know, and um, I try to be involved with yeah. CCW and things like that, you know. And well, you're certainly putting your faith into action. Um, thank you so much you for know, visiting. There's one thing I forgot to say in the beginning sure. that, uh, you know, when the government uh, was taking the priests, especially the Catholics, you know, they and the doctors and the lawyers, all the learned people, they really didn't want any people that that would... Uh, uh, Oppose them, them in some yes. way. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think that the, our, our um, cla- uh, um, young people that are uh, looking forward to their confirmation, they are so blessed... That they don't have to go through what you did. Right, that they can freely go to church, they can pray, they can help out in church reading, or they can greet the people, you know. And yeah. and you regularly tell your story to the confirmandi at your parish, right? Right. I, I, I you give to, them a little perspective on right. the gift that they're getting. That You're right, exactly, that they're, they're blessed and they're very... Um, you know, God watches over them, sure. and He's always with them, so they remember the Lord is always there. For sure. Yeah, I, I mean, your story has two takeaways for me. It's just um, certainly it, your faith is a gift, um, but it's also how important grandparents can be in yes. shaping the faith of their grandchildren and and elders in the church like yourself, you know, working with younger people. I think that's great. And then this gratitude that we should all feel for having the ability to worship and live out our Catholic faith freely. I think, you know, most of us take that for yes. granted and you give us that perspective that, you yes. know. Uh, you know, it's all of us are blessed that they can go to church whenever they want and they can pray whenever they want, you know, without anybody threatening them or scaring them, you know, and so... Yeah. We are very blessed. Very blessed people. Thank you again for telling us your story. Um, So, you know, that's it for this episode. Be sure to watch or listen every month as we'll launch new episodes every first Monday. So be sure to tune in. Thanks for listening to the 75th anniversary edition of the Faith into Action podcast from the Diocese of Joliet, recorded here in our studios at the Blanchett Catholic Center. New episodes are released on YouTube and podcast platforms the first Monday of each month. Please remember to subscribe and share the good news of Jesus Christ. May God bless you and yours.